Haikyuu Season 2 Episode 15 Starting Yeah, yeah finally it's a long time coming Can't blame them Can't blame them I'm nervous for them too I was wondering why they were talking about his classes <laughs> so cutthroat, but I kind of love it. That's sweet. Man, give his brother some credit. He's really trying. He's just pouring his heart out in his way. <laughs> oh, getting shown up. Yeah, I think one thing that's been clear is that the first years were really a big part of what breathed energy into this team. Simplicity and fortitude, interesting. Yeah, simplicity and only lasting one episode and fortitude and facing a ass beating. You can simply get owned. Episode 15, place to play. We still gotta work on our cheer squad. Hope that happens one day. Yeah, I better do that jump serve. But they're gaining fans. Even if it's from the other teams. Is that Ida? Here we go. Seem a little like wild. Is it out? Was it out or in? It was in. Interesting. Nothing simple about that. The foot save. Again. There's like a wildness to them. They they tricked me with the banner. They're unorthodox. Huh. I mean, it looks like they're having a great time. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. The rough. They got a lot of spirit and character. Why am I? Why am I starting to like them? No. 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 Hate everyone until they lose. Damn. What the heck? Why? Damn. Someone. There you go, Tanaka. Again, always Tanaka. Hey, we can play Wild too. Not the only athletes on the court. Off the wall! <laughs> the Legend of Hinata grows. There you go. There you go. Yeah, we're athletes too. They have to find their feet. They gotta find their feet and control the rhythm. I think that'll do it. Oh, that was kind of cool. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They're, they just have no, like, what do you call it? Possession. Time. Here we go, here we go. Here we go. Control that tempo. More of that. This seems like it's gonna be a fun match. Like, it feels like they're playing, both of them. Yeah, yeah, but the more they can say discipline and stick to what they're good at, and not fall into the, the wildness of the other team's pattern, the better they'll probably do. They don't want to get dragged down into their, their swamp. <laughs> I love the sound effects, too. Oh, this game's flying by. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, it's funny how people kind of, like, Earn your respect when you see them play, their personalities aside. He did say that, yeah. He talked the talk and he was walking the walk. Feels like it's it's in the other direction. I think when it was first said, the, the meaning was like, in order to really enjoy the game, you gotta have the fundamentals so down that you don't really have to think about them. If you can't return a hit, right? If you can't save anything, you can't get the ball in the air, you're just floundering around. It's when certain basic processes get automatic that you start to operate at a higher level where it, it gets creative. And that's kind of the play element of it. <laughs> but like watching these guys, it's a weird reversal of that where it's kind of like their joy is what gives them strength. Like they're just having so much fun. They're so into it. They don't mind, th you know, throwing themselves around. And of course they have just enough fundamentals that it makes it work. It's not one or the other, but they're definitely leaning on the, the emotional element of it. A special technique again. They also are surprisingly giving, like, they seem to be admiring Arsuna while playing. Maybe I misjudged this Okawa the Lesser. Okay, alright. 
What? Whoops. Block's a block. Point's a point. Your face will heal, but that point will be in the record books forever. You must die for volleyball. Die for it. <laughs> die for volleyball. <laughs> volleyball is life, and therefore it is also death. Does that mean Sugiwara's in? Oh, shit. Uh, okay. Alright. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, why why take out Hinata? At this late stage in the game? Yeah, it turns out this guy's kind of a softie. This guy's just very stern. Ivan Drago exterior. If Karasuna can get along <laughs> and Date can get along, maybe we can all learn to get along. Fair enough, fair enough. I think a good pair. You can just feel that Ukai is taking a very special interest in Hinata. <laughs> yeah, it's a relief to see the, the subs come in and do well. If I'm not mistaken, they reused the animation a lot for the, the jump serves for different characters, but I feel like that was a, a unique one. Could be wrong though. Nice. Two more points. Sugiwara version. Oh yeah. Awesome. Daichi. Daichi's playing for survival. Last chance. Their energy is infectious. <laughs> just like wing this. Like <laughs> they just saw it once. Like hey, that sounds that sounds fun. And, uh, yeah. Did they just lose? They did. <laughs> they lost on that. I, I, I can't hate on it, though. I respect it. You know what? They know who they are. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I can't help but respect it. Like, it's weird. They managed to hit, like, this kind of middle ground or, or third category. Because I think if you're in this kind of domain, like sports, where it's do or die, there's a clear outcome. There's a win or lose category. That just sort of contains within it the definition of success. And so there's kind of no negotiating with that. But because it's so difficult and can be really painful and just takes an un unreal amount of dedication and pain, as we've seen from Karasuno and other teams, there's a temptation to kind of downplay it. Essentially, the other option, which is just, in a sense, not playing. It's like, well, it doesn't really matter anyway, which is fine, I guess. Yes, it's fine not to play, but there's something kind of unsatisfying about playing volleyball in action, but not really playing in spirit, pretending it doesn't matter, like losing and then saying, who cares, it's just a dumb game anyway, or making excuses, etc. In a sense, it's like not engaging with it fully, not giving one's all in order to preserve one's one sense of pride or something like that. But interestingly, this team feels like they're doing something totally different. Like they're playing to win and they're giving it their all, but they're playing a different kind of game or it's a different set of values. Like I've said multiple times, although this show is very focused on volleyball, it's not really where the stakes are. The stakes are with the characters. Interestingly, I feel like this other team, they they still like manage to hit on that in a way. It's just like in a very different way. It's not so much about pushing oneself to the limits and overcoming one's obstacles and facing pain and fear head on. It's like maximizing something about their spirit and and being joyful in the moment they're in, if that makes sense. So it doesn't feel bad, it doesn't feel wrong. I think crucially because it's not avoidant, it's embracing whatever it is they're going for. They are striving for something. It's not delusion, it's not weakness. There's something kind of pure and honest about it. I also was wondering. Yeah. Right. And then the, the inmates started running the asylum. <laughs> this poor coach. Oh man, this coach must be so at the end of his rope. This coach just wants to play volleyball. You need a better manager, better assistant. It's funny that I was so fixated on the banner and that's becoming a central point of the, the thing. Wild and free, that's a good one. Manager? This is your your one duty, I think. I don't really know what the managers do. What exactly do they do? Of course, Suno's managers are any indication. It's finding flags in closets and dealing with other people's emotional trauma. And rival team flashback. So they're all really close. I'm gonna do me. 
I find myself liking him, surprisingly. <laughs> Who would have thought? He didn't make the best first impression. Okay, now you crossed the line. I take back everything I said about you. How dare you insult Daichi. I appreciate it, Hinata. Now I can just call him crop... I already forgot it. <laughs> Cropped hair. Cropped haircut. It was boring now. And Daichi took that personally. <laughs> this is job. Yeah, he knows who he is. And that comes across so clearly. He's like the... I don't know how to explain it. Like the a certain kind of backbone. He just feels safer knowing he's there, even though he doesn't take the spotlight a lot. Yeah, Daichi, like, despite his, like, a lack of screen time, he's so clearly the leader. And then they opened a clinic. Are you still having fun? <laughs> it's going well. Everything's going well. We need to have more fun. Have more fun now! You're not having enough fun! So much focus on the manager. What is... Oh, and manager flashback. Rival team manager flashback. This might be a first. Oh, damn. That's harsh. Doing your job for you. What you should have done a long time ago. She's pulling them back on the track I was talking about where they gotta respect the game, respect the goal. So what do we even have? I wonder if this is also something we can scavenge to a healthy degree. Whatever you about to say, don't. And that's what they were leading up to. Somehow they still enjoyed it. Okay, but we have a, a little bit of a, a, a lead. Oh, is it over? Damn. This match ended up being way more fun than I thought. They end up being somewhat likable, this crew. But yeah, you can only take that so far. Like, talking about weaseling your way out, you know, pretending it doesn't matter. I don't think they're doing that. I mean, I think they genuinely are having a good time and just have a different guiding star. But, you know, that only works if it's fully honest. The second it becomes an escape from responsibility or working harder or doing something difficult that you actually want to do, that's when it becomes a weakness. It's a very fine line, but I think it's just something you can intuit if you're really, you know, looking at yourself and what your motivations are. They hit a point where it was revealed that they actually really want to win. And at that point, there's no leaning on the whole fun thing anymore. I can definitely imagine a situation where they're just here to play, you know, and they're not attached to an outcome of, of winning a championship, hanging out with the bros, and maybe they have just rich lives outside of it and are great people, etc. Yeah, but the longer the match went on and the more they started losing, the more it became clear that, that that's not all there is. There was competitiveness in them and they coveted a title. And, and as soon as that came out, it's irresponsible not to do their best or make excuses, which I think is the manager's point. Honestly, I'm not even sure how they managed to do that. Like, what about the writing of this episode made it seem so alive? Perhaps it's that it broke the, the mold in some some ways from matches we've seen previously it definitely feels distinct also in its way you know while i think carson is definitely a superior team all around in keeping with the theme of being omnivores taking a little bit of each team there is something here for them like you do feel like this shines a light on something that they're lacking if that makes sense they love volleyball but they're very intense you know they're very serious about it there have been moments where you can feel the joy you know there's there have been some matches that have just been really fun and you can tell they're they're fully engaged a lot of times though it feels like they're very cerebral about it they're very in their heads very like life or death about it. And I think their their goal is correct. You know, their goal is to win and be as, as great as they can. But I think there's a certain way in which being too nar narrow focused can actually make you worse, if that makes sense. Like there's a there's an optimal point that's hard to find that's in between just tight focus and concern and care and play. So this kind of feels like they're playing with that spectrum a little bit. Also in this episode, I didn't expect it. It kind of came out of nowhere, but I love uh, I love the, the Daichi spotlight as I would, of course, giving him a little, a little shout out there as like the, the anchor of the team. I think part of what makes him so clearly the leader is that you can count on him. You know, he's so so reliable, emotionally stable, emotionally strong, secure, resilient, courageous. He creates the floor, you know, like you're not going to dip below him. He's going to pick you up. In many ways, he's a rock. Anyway, I'm still predicting a Carson a victory. It seems pretty much predetermined for a lot of reasons, but I'm really happy watching this because I feel like there actually are some really interesting ideas explored and I can see this being critical for their development and coming up more in future episodes.